Happy Wednesday. Welcome to a crazy day in my life. So here's the schedule up on the side. You can see it's pretty much just all clients. And then the end of the day, I have a small group training. So it's about 8.45. I have just about an hour until my next client. So we're gonna make some breakfast. And as we're doing that, I wanna talk to you a little bit about programming today. So essentially, since I have so many clients, everyone is different. I wanna tell you exactly what we're working on in our workouts. And then after the workout, I'm gonna tell you how I think we're gonna progress it next week based on their goals. So I already had one client today. So let's talk all about their program. We're also making more coffee. All right, so my first client is in person and the main goals that she came to me with originally were to improve her mobility, build strength and some body recomposition. After doing our initial assessment, the main things that I saw that we could work on were ankle and hip mobility and hamstring and glute strength. Oatmeal. So I'll pop her program up here. Some of the things that she really enjoys are big compound heavy lifts and kettlebell work. So we've been working our way through some different kettlebell skills. And today we started working on some gooseneck swings in preparation for snatches. Then for her, since she loves working on like some bigger heavy compound lifts, we've been working our way through some different barbell skills. And we actually just finished up six weeks of overhead pressing. And I just kind of wanted to like see where her strength was with it. So we did kind of like a little pyramid up. So we started with a lower weight. And then as we increased the weight, we took the reps down just to kind of see where she would end. Then we worked into a super set of sumo deadlifts and a chest press. And again, these are two exercises that we've been working on these for about four weeks. And then we ended today with a little bit of stability work with some single leg squats. So what are we going to work on next week? I'm not totally sure yet. I asked her if there were any other barbell lifts that she wanted to focus on. She said, not really, whatever I think. One that we have not learned yet is the chest press, and I would love to get that in eventually, but we just did spend a good chunk of time in that horizontal push with dumbbells, so we could make the case to move her over to a barbell, but we also were just doing really heavy shoulder work for the last six weeks. So what I'm thinking instead is really working on her bilateral front squats. Part of the reason for this is because because I really wanna get her more comfortable with double cleans or double kettlebell cleans. So this can be a really good opportunity to work on kind of both of those skills at the same time. In terms of other movement patterns I wanna cycle in, I'm thinking kickstand deadlifts. That's gonna be a really nice progression from our very heavy sumo squats that we were doing. And then I wanna get some more pulling patterns in there. So I'm thinking a barbell bent over row so we can still work on her heavy lifts with the barbell, but it doesn't necessarily require so much effort that it has to be done at like the very beginning of the workout. Like I would rather spend that time focusing on our squat patterning instead. In terms of what else we'll focus on, honestly, this stuff is gonna change each week and that's just because I wanna keep something fun happening. Everything else that I decide on those big lifts are gonna stick around for four to six weeks. So I do wanna make sure, especially since we're meeting in person, we have access to a lot of different types of equipment that she doesn't necessarily have access to at home. I wanna make sure that we're kind of utilizing the fun stuff in there too. And I'll decide on the fun stuff when I actually sit down and program, but that's where my initial thoughts go. That was a tough first one to do because I'm literally moving into a new phase of programming with her, but I feel like there's gonna be some more strategic stuff to talk about with everybody else during the day. Here's my breakfast. We just have some oatmeal, blueberries, peanut butter, protein powder. I have 55 minutes for my next client. I'm gonna sit down, relax this, stop talking with my mouth full, and then we'll come back, chat about my next person. Hello, we're back. I'm gonna grab equipment as we talk about what we're gonna do with this next client. I think that's everything I need. Oh no, I need, no, I have a kettlebell. Okay, great. All right, so this next client originally came to me with the goals of getting stronger, building consistency, and learning more. She had never done formal strength training, so a lot of what we're focused on is more like basic skills, which there's nothing wrong with doing basic skills. In terms of my focus, she does have quite a bit of mobility restrictions, but she's also really good at working her way around them because she is a dancer and has wonderful mind-muscle connection and overall coordination. But overhead mobility is a little bit of an issue, thoracic mobility, hip mobility. So those are some of the big things that I'm always keeping in mind and also giving her mobility drills, either in the warm up for homework or if we have extra time at the end to kind of sprinkle in. It's actually been about a month since our last session, three weeks. She went on vacation, so we're just kind of getting back into it. And we are actually starting a new cycle of programming right now. So some of the main lists we're gonna focus on are kickstand 
handstand deadlifts. And one of my goals with these is to get some numbers on the board, like really get some weight up on there. Chest press or technically a floor press because she doesn't have a bench. This is actually one of the only pushing movements that feel okay on her upper body due to some different mobility restrictions. So we are cycling these back into her programming. Again, just getting some numbers up there, getting some upper body work in that feels good and she feels confident in. We're gonna introduce some single leg squats today, which are always a little bit of a challenge. And then a lat pullover to get that vertical pull. And again, it is one of the few movements that we can do upper body wise that doesn't irritate her mobility restrictions. We'll dive into the session and then after we get through it, we'll come back and chat about how I wanna progress these next week, seeing how she did with it this week. Okay, stand deadlift. Literally the same thing, but now the weight is on either side of our leg. So we're gonna start again with the right leg front. Back toe is just there for support. We want the weights to go straight down the side of our leg and then back up. So it's like we're shaving the legs on the way down, just the sides though. We're gonna go for eight, right leg front, and then we'll switch. Yup, really stretch those hips back. There you go. Halfway, three more, you got it, big inhale. Use that exhale to stand. Good, nice tension, last one. Good, step it forward, you can place the weights down. Talk to me about those. And give me like a scale of one to 10, 10 being like I couldn't do one more rep. I like that for today. And we're also gonna do, you know, two more, two more sets, so. <laughs> Okay, we did it. Let's talk about her session really quickly. Deadlifts were great. Started out at like a six out of 10 intensity and did around like an eight, nine, which is awesome. Since we're doing three sets of eight right now, next week I wanna do three sets of 10 with the same weight and see if we can replicate the same intensity. And then from there, I'm gonna bump up the weight and take the reps down. Chest press was like an eight out of 10 intensity. She said she probably had like two good reps left in the tank. Next week I wanna go into a variation where we press from a protracted position she has a lot of issues creating space in the back of her rib cage and overall like scapular uh, protraction. So this is a really, really good variation, especially tying with her breath work, which she's really, really good at to just kind of open up that space. And it's going to help get a deeper stretch on the chest because we're going to alternate those arms. Single leg squat, we did just the eccentric. So we stood up with two legs, lower down with one. I want to add weight and do the exact same variation next time. Probably just something light and really just using it as counterbalance. Today was like brand new skill. Let's just kind of get it in our body. And then the lap pullovers were great. It really loosened up a lot of the fascia that's super tight, like under her armpits. I have no idea what I want to do with that yet next week. I have to think about it, but that's kind of where we're at. So I have about two hours till my next client. And then it's like one, two, three, four, six. So it's gonna be a little bit of a sprint at the end of the day. I don't really have any busy work to do. So I'm gonna take this time to relax. I'm gonna eat lunch around 12.30 and then we will meet back. Let's talk about our next client. So client number three of the day, their initial goals when they came to me were building muscle, rebuilding her core and increasing stamina. This client does have some underlying medical issues. So certain movement patterns, like a lot of rotation are not really on the table, but I will say we have made a ton of progress since starting to work together in August of last year. So it's been so like six months. And some of the primary focuses we've had are building her hip hinge, working on her deep core muscles, so strengthening her TVA, making sure she can connect to her pelvic floor, her diaphragm, and then overhead mobility, which actually has gotten a lot better and I could probably take that off of my list. So she recently got adjustable dumbbells up to 52 and a half pounds. And we have a new goal for this year of 2024 that she is to use like the 52.5 pounds in an exercise at some point to prove her husband wrong that she can actually do it. And I was like, oh, 
we're going to have you doing that in no time. So in terms of our programming today, we're going to start with some RDLs. The heaviest weights that she had before she got the adjustable dumbbells were 15. So we're going to bump it up to 20s. It might be a little light today because she is pretty strong, but just working with the new set of weights, I think is a good place to be. So I'm hoping to be like a six out of 10 intensity. We're going to superset that with a half kneeling overhead press. She also recently got a 15 pound kettlebell. So I just want to get her a little bit more used to using a kettlebell since it is typically a little bit harder on your wrist. Then we've been working on Bulgarian split squats. So last week we used 115. Now we're going to use 210. So holding them on either side and we've added five pounds. Supersetting that with a lat pullover. Again, really just working on her overhead mobility, which has gotten a lot better. And then if we have time, we're going to end with some stability ball dead bugs to hit that deep core goal. I would say we're like two weeks into kind of this phase of programming with most of my clients. I'm going to stick between four and six weeks before we change things up in terms of our main lifts and even maybe the structure of the workout, depending on their specific goals and enjoyment. Technically, I could do longer. I could do eight weeks. I could do 12 weeks. I just find that if you just get creative, you can keep people progressing and working on the same movement patterns without getting them to feel bored. So that's our next client. You'll see a little peek of what we're working on today in our session. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about how I'm going to progress next week. And this is this is our sprint right here. It's about 1240. So I got 20 minutes until we're just going, going, going. So let's go, go, go. So feet are underneath the hips. Weights are directly in front of you. We're going to slide down the legs right below the knees and back up. Mm -hmm. We're going to go for 10. Big inhale down. Exhale, lift up. Think of hips moving first. There you go. Very nice. And we can place them down on the ground. Okay. Talk to me about those. Good. And that's a really good like physical cue for you to be like, am I doing this right? Or am I squatting a little bit too much? So that's really good. And that's perfect. Woo! Let's chat really quickly. So RDLs next week, I actually want to go up to 25 pounds and I'm going to take the reps way down to six. So that's a really basic structure of what I like to do with like big compound lifts. We'll kind of work our way up six reps, eight reps, 10 reps, and then we'll increase the weight, drop the reps back down to six. And her intensity there today was exactly what I wanted, like a six out of 10. She got a lot of really good hamstring engagement. So we're just going to keep on moving the weight up. The half kneeling overhead presses, like I said, some movement patterns in her core don't feel super great. We got like a little twingy in our oblique during the second set, I think. So we ended up doing them standing for the rest of them. We got to use a kettlebell today, which was her rack position was awesome. She learned that really quickly because um, she doesn't have really like any experience holding a kettlebell. And that was like a seven out of 10 intensity. So next week I'm going to keep it standing and we're going to aim for eight reps. Bulgarians, these are so spicy. They sneak up on you so quickly. We ended up doing 10 reps, 10 reps and then six for the last one. Her heart rate was just getting super elevated and it was becoming really difficult to keep good form. So I'm actually gonna keep this exactly the same next week, aiming for three sets of 10, not needing to drop down the reps at the end with the 10 pound dumbbells. Same thing, the lat pullover ended up starting to tug on her oblique. So in the moment I just said, all right, instead of a vertical pull, we're gonna do a horizontal pull. We worked on our bent over rows and when we did 15 pounds for the first set of 10, it was only like a five out of 10 intensity. So we upped it to 20 pounds because she has not had access to that weight yet. And we worked for six reps. It was definitely a lot more challenging. Next week, I'll either keep it there or I think with her dumbbells, there might be like a 17.5 option. So we might we might play with that instead just to get a little bit more range of motion. And then we ended it there today. We did not do the core work at the end because she was having some funky issues, like I said. And I'm gonna get her a little bit homework. Let's talk about our next client because we have that in 12 minutes. We're actually gonna talk about this as I reset the room a little bit. So my next client is actually the husband husband of my earlier client who was on vacation. So this is also his first session back in three weeks, which will be fun. He's got a weight loss goal. He wants to build strength specifically in his core and back and gain muscle specifically in his arms. Some of our main focuses on my end are understanding how to not use his low back for everything. <laughs> He's pretty flexible. So we're also working on just a lot more like muscle control. Overhead mobility is definitely restricted. And then just strengthening the muscles of, of his back in in general. So with him, we're going to be working in two supersets. You can see that I love the superset format, especially for virtual clients. I feel like because I only work with them for 45 minutes, you get like the best bang for your buck. But first thing we're going to work on are some front squats, which we've been working on adding weight to them. And his form has been really good working on controlling like the end range of motion. Then, oh God. <laughs> 
We're gonna be doing single leg hamstring curls on the stability ball, and we're gonna be working on the out phase only. Those are gonna be brutal and they're gonna torch his hamstrings. But that's a fun one to pair with the front squats rather than doing like lower and upper body together because squats really aren't gonna fatigue the hamstring. The hamstring does connect at the knee and the hip. So when you're bending the knee and the hip, your hamstring basically just like stays slack. So first superset is all lower body. Second superset's gonna be all upper body. And same thing, kind of a bigger lift. We're gonna be continuing to work on our floor presses. And then we're gonna come into this half kneeling overhead hold. So we're, I'm trying to work on a few different things here, understanding how to utilize that big toe connection on the floor to tuck the hips under, get into that full hip extension, overhead reach without flaring into the ribs or elevating the shoulder. So it's really just an isometric position that I'm going to build upon, hopefully into half kneeling overhead pressing, hopefully into some windmills to really work into his hips as well. And a lot of this is supporting the low back stuff, the muscle control, kind of tying the whole body together. So that's what we're kind of working on. Let's see it in action. We're gonna do single leg hamstring curls, but we're only gonna focus on the out phase today. And then we're gonna progress it next week. So you can pick which leg you wanna start with, but we start with one leg on top. You're gonna lift the hips, extend all the way out, lower the hips, Pull it back in. And we're gonna go for six on each leg. Good, so freeze for a second. You wanna reverse it. Yeah, so lift, then extend. There you go. Then lower the hips, then pull it all the way back in. You got it. Great control, last one. Nice. Okay, take a second. What are we feeling? How do they feel? He did a great job today. That was a hard program. I don't know why I'm standing. Let's talk about this and then we'll reset for our next client. We're almost there. Two more clients, then a small group training. Also, I don't ever recommend working with this many people on one day. This is not normal for me. It just kind of happened this way before I could realize and kind of like block out some of my day. Tomorrow I have no one. Friday I have very few people. Yesterday I had very few people. Monday I only had a handful of people. So like this is a fluke. Anyway, squats. Next week, how long have we been working on these? One, two, not long. Goblet before that. Yeah, so we came out of split squats. So this is like our third week with some variation of a bilateral front squat. I wanna do another round next week. I'm either gonna keep it at the same weight, it was like a seven out of 10 intensity and go up to 12 reps, but his low back was starting to get a little irritated by the very end because he has a lot of mobility. And like I said, we're trying to keep things out of the low back. So I don't know, I gotta think on it. I could either keep it where it is, go up to 12, bring it down to six and add 35s instead of 30s, we'll see. Single leg curls, those were super, Spicy. Next week, he's strong enough. I wanna do the full out and in curl. Today, we only did the lengthening. Floor press, I am actually probably gonna do the same thing I'm gonna do with his wife. Take the weight down just a hair so that we can hold it up the whole time and do that alternating protraction. And then the half kneeling hold, I'm actually going to start teaching windmills. So we're gonna lower the weight a lot. We'll probably just do it with the 10. I do like the kettlebell for him because he actually, when we did our mobility assessment, doesn't have full wrist flexion. So we're just kind of strengthening those flexion muscles. And then I've given him homework to work on that on his own. So we had a few extra minutes. So anytime we have a few extra minutes at the end, I'm either going to implement a core exercise or maybe do a mobility drill. Today we did some core. We just did like a stability ball dead bug. And that really worked toward his goal of building strength through his core and his back. So let's set up for our next client and we'll talk about what we're doing with him. This next client is actually like a personal friend of mine. So we tend to get chatty and I always have to remind myself like stop chatting, you're wasting time. <laughs> So because of that, I typically keep his warmups very short and succinct. There's a few drills that work really well to get him like fired, ready to go quickly. So I usually try to keep it to like three exercises and then we jump right in. His goals, general wellness, strength and mobility. Big things for him, back and posture, which is very loose. He has a very distinct posture that he likes to live in and has some trouble naturally isolating his scapula from his shoulders, from his rib cage, from his thoracic spine and then from his low back. So a lot of times it's like, if we're not really actively thinking about it, you know, we try to correct like shoulders back, but then we also get 
rib flare or thoracic extension and lumbar extension. So we work a lot on really trying to make sure everything is stacked and isolated. So that's kind of what I mean by back and posture. We're doing supersets. We're gonna start with some suitcase reverse lunges. He does have kettlebells and they're all just single kettlebells and different weights. So you're gonna see, we're gonna use like two different weights on each side. It's not really the end of the world. You'll see though for him, I'm gonna have him hold the higher weight on the working side, like on the working leg, just so we're focusing as much of the weight as possible on that front standing leg. Then we're gonna do some 90-90 single arm overhead pressing. So we've been really, really drilling our like overhead pressing while keeping the spine stacked. So I wanna challenge him by doing it from more of an unstable positioning and added bonus, we get some hip mobility in there. He is a runner, so he tends to work very much in the sagittal plane. So anytime that we can work the hips, in internal or external rotation. That's gonna be really important for him. Then we're doing this fun series of single leg bridges with chest pressing. So we're gonna do an isometric bridge hold with a single arm chest press. And then we've also been working on some different core drills from a bear plank position. We're gonna do some pull throughs. So lots of like fun stuff in here today. This is definitely a program that's like more creative, kind of more interesting drills. Some of this is because again, he only has access to certain types of weight. But the other reason is because he is a client who I just want moving better with better coordination in space. So that's why we're kind of working on some of these more interesting drills. Let's do it. Instead of bringing the weight straight out to the side, see that 90 degree angle? I want you to think more 45 like we would with a push up. So just a little twist. It's um, going to be a little safer on your shoulder. And you're actually gonna find that your core doesn't have to work as hard. You're not gonna feel like you're gonna roll over as much. Nice, we're gonna lift up the left leg. Good, press the hips up. And we're gonna go for 10 in here. Yeah, good, yay. Nice, drop the hips, pull the weight into the chest, roll to the side, and please don't kill yourself. Somehow I am like freezing and sweating at the same time. We have a nice 30 minute break now. So let's talk about this program, <laughs> what I'm gonna do next week. And then I'm not gonna wear this to small group training, but I am gonna have like a pretty quick turnaround. So I just wanna like pick out what I'm gonna wear because by the time I get to that point of my day, there's gonna be no more brain power left. There was barely enough brain power for that session. Okay, <clears throat> the reverse lunges looked great. I wanna keep him on them for another week. We're like just getting into that, like pulling the front knee back position. It's almost consistent all the time. Time. I'm gonna keep the same weight up the rep. So we're gonna to go to eight reps next week. We're gonna do exactly the same thing with that 90-90 overhead press. Next week for the bridge chest press, we're gonna move both. So we're gonna do one single leg bridge, one chest press, one single leg bridge, one chest press. He also loves anything like push up and chest related. So that's always a really fun one for him. And then not sure what I'm gonna do with the plank variation. I know eventually I wanna move into this like shoulder tap push up combo, but that's a lot of pushing and we need to get something pulling in there. So TBD on that. That's a problem for future Justina. Okay, just so I can do everything else, let's talk about the next client and we'll get set up for them. Okay, so next client, main goal is just building consistency and movement and then making sure our form is correct in all of our major lifts. This client is also more recently postpartum, I believe six, eight, nine months, something along those lines. So on my end, definitely a lot of like rebuilding core connection. Other things we focus on hip mobility, hip flexors. She is a pretty, she knows how to retract it, but she does like to live in this forward head position as well as kind of in this rounded position. So a lot of pulling movements for her and making making sure that we can just kind of loosen up her posterior pelvic floor, we get a little tight back there. So what we've been working on is actually triceps. So today we're gonna do a tempo goblet squat. We're gonna do a lat pullover, get that pulling movement. And then we're gonna do a forearm plank with some knee taps. Then we're gonna move into a kickstand deadlift, a chest press. And then if we have time, something with the stability ball. So that's my strategy. I am, what's happening? I'm gonna pick out some clothes and then we'll come back for this last virtual session. <laughs> Weight is up at the chest. We start nice and tall. I'm going to count you down to the bottom for three, two, one. You're going to hold up one. Okay? It's going to be nice and spicy. Um, we're only going to do six reps. And we're going to start with the 30. If we feel good, we might go up to 35. That looks great. All right. So we're going to inhale and go down for three. 
Down for two, down for one, hold, up one. Nice, again, down for three. Talk to me about those. Oh, great. Um, I'll remind you again when we do it next time, but we're gonna inhale down, exhale up. Hello, everybody. One of the big things that I work on with this client is moving slowly through movement. She just naturally likes to move a little bit faster, which I do find with a lot of clients, it's hard to slow people down. So she really proved she could nail that this week. So our tempo goblet squats, we're actually gonna make them front squats next week, add a little bit more weight now that she's proved that she can move 30 pounds with actual control. Unsure what I wanna do with the lat pullover and the core next week. These are all kind of like interchangeable things. Kickstand deadlift, I'm gonna keep it exactly the same next week, really just focusing on getting those hips back. And then I definitely want to stick with the chest press. We found a good working weight. So we are just going to keep the weight, build the reps and really try and get a few more sets under our belt next week. So now I have to leave for small group training in about 15 minutes. So I'm going to get changed on the way. We'll talk about the program. This is the second week of it out of four and I'm very excited. So let's go. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about group training really quickly. Main movement patterns we're going to be focused on. We're going to start with a power exercise. We're working our way up to kettlebell swings. So today we're going to learn the kettlebell hike. Then we're going to do two supersets. Main lift is going to be deadlifts. Last week we did single kettlebell. This week we're gonna be doing double kettlebell. This is where it gets fun, tricky, but fun. I wanna work on some incline push-ups, depending on where we end up in this space, because it is a little busy at this time. If I have access to the landmine, I'd actually rather use that, simply because I really wanna work on stuff that they don't have access to at home. Then second superset, we're gonna be working on some reverse lunges. And then like a TBD pulling exercise, again, kind of depending on where we're at in the gym. And then we're gonna end with something either like a partner pal off press, maybe some med ball stuff. Again, really trying to marry like group training, fun exercises with actually like a progressive program. And that's the beauty of small group training. You get a little bit of a community vibe, but you also get a ton of individualized attention. So I will let you know what we end up doing after this session. I'll see you later. <laughs> I just got in the door, let's chat. That was a wonderful session. I love the group that I'm working with. They are gung-ho for anything, super strong. So a few of the things that I was unsure about, we did end up working on incline push-ups just because the equipment that I wanted to use, I wanted to do um, like a half kneeling landmine press. It was just a little too crowded, I didn't have access to that. And then I actually wanted to do in a squat rack inverted rows. So that way I'm getting more of a vertical push and then a horizontal pull. But again, wasn't enough space. So for the pull exercise, we did a horizontal pull and did seated row. So even though I had two horizontal movements for my upper body, it was actually nice because last week we did a vertical pull. So we changed it in that way. And I think that is something to think about really quickly before we talk about how I'm going to progress next week or potentially progress based on the equipment that I have. The more that you know your why, the easier it is to change things up in the moment, whether it's equipment's not available, whether it's someone can't do a certain movement. So I know in this group training, I wanna get in a comprehensive full body workout. So I'm gonna do some power in the beginning, then I'm gonna make sure that I hit a hip dominant movement, which was the deadlift, a knee dominant movement, which was the reverse lunges, an upper body pull, which was the seated row, and an upper body push, which was the push up. So just some food for thought right there. Let's talk about how we're gonna progress next week. We're gonna do some dead stop swings for our kettlebell work. Deadlifts, we did like two kettlebells, a little sumo. I I actually wanna get them in a trap bar next week. We're gonna keep it super light and high rep just so they can really get used to the grip as well as the stance and really get some reps under their belt so they understand how to move that weight in space. Again, the push and pull, I'm gonna keep just kind of letting the universe take that into their hands. But at the end of the day, if we keep working on push-ups, like that's not a bad thing. And then reverse lunges. So we held the weight contralateral, which means that it's going to be on the moving side. Next week, I wanna challenge them, move it onto the working side, so ipsilateral. This is a little more challenging because now you have to really use your core and all of the weight is over that standing side. And then what did we do at the end? Oh, we ended up doing some like partner pow off presses. So the other person's over here facing the other way. It's like you go, then I go. It was super fun. Thank you all so much for watching this very long video. Hopefully if you are a fellow personal trainer or group fitness instructor or coach, whatever, you got some good programming ideas out of this. And if you are on the client side and you're a muggle and you just want to see the behind the scenes, hopefully you had fun with it. I'm going to go. I'm starving. Goodbye. Love you all. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.